The Cubs open their series against the Washington Nationals today in D.C. The Cubs are going to look to keep their hot streak going and try to continue to gain some ground on the Atlanta Braves, who lost yesterday and means the Cubs are now five games back out of the wild card race. We're also going to talk about some Cubs pitchers, give some injury updates, and one on Drew Smiley, who I'm sure a lot of you guys are confused about. But here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name's Anthony Pasquale, and you can find me on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. You can also find the Cubs Baseball Channel on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. I'm sure you noticed yesterday we put some really uh, good content up there on all those different channels, so make sure to follow us on there, engage with us, get in our comment sections there, and we'll make sure to reach back and reach out to all of you guys who love talking about the Cubs on all these different platforms. But we got a lot to get into. The Cubs are red hot as of late. They've won four series in a row, and they've won 29 out of their last 47 ball games, including seven out of their last eight series. Honestly, if it wasn't for that sweep in Cleveland, the Cubs would be on quite the hot streak right now, and we could be talking about their playoff chances being a little bit higher. But we do have some injuries to talk about, some different players to to make some news about. Uh, we're going to start Hayden Wesneski really quick. He is throwing live BP in Arizona, so he is on the mend trying to get back to big league action soon. But here's the one that we've been seeing a lot of questions about in our comment section. So we're here to clear it up uh, if what we know is correct. So Drew Smiley four days ago was placed on conditional waivers, which means uh, he is not released from the club. He's just available for other teams to pick up. And what they would pick up is his prorated salary for the rest of the season, which I believe across the calculations, he would be due about $4.1 million. Um, so essentially the Cubs are trying to avoid paying Drew Smiley that $4.1 million throughout the rest of the season. And they're hoping that a contending team like the Dodgers or the Braves or the Yankees or the Phillies would want a left-handed reliever and they'd be willing to eat that $4 million. That way the Cubs could hopefully stay below the luxury tax, avoid that penalty, and then this team would get Drew Smiley for the rest of the season. However, uh, we didn't hear any news that he was claimed, and you were on waivers for 48 hours. That's when teams have to file a claim by, and we haven't heard anything, so I think that means the Cubs are going to retain Smiley for the rest of the season. Now, there's your answer as to why he pitched uh, – throughout the Pittsburgh series, but he was technically still always a cup. He was never a free agent. He was just available to be claimed and they would work out the terms later. But Smiley is three and six on the year, doesn't have a great win and loss record, but in 52 and two thirds innings pitched, he's pitched to the tune of a 2.91 ERA. He truly has quietly been one of the more reliable pitchers for Craig Council this season. He's been used out of the relief role more so, a few couple multi inning outings, but also been down at the back end of that bullpen a decent amount. So you got to give him some credit for the way that he's been able to pitch um, over the course of this season. I'm surprised not a lot of teams were willing to to bite on that bait and, and pick him up for the rest of the season. Um, I guess $4 million is is still pretty cheap for a middle reliever, which is really what Drew Smiley is. But uh, it's good news for the Cubs' bullpen that they do get to keep him for the rest of the season. Now, here's another one, Jorge Lopez. I'm sure you guys noticed Porter Hodge got the last two save situations uh, for the Cubs. And you might have been wondering where Porter Hodge um, got the save situations from where, why wasn't Jorge Lopez out there uh, in the ball game? And uh, the answer is apparently he has a little bit of a groin strain, but it's not believed to be too, too serious, which is why uh, the Cubs have not placed him on the injured list. Now the Cubs could ultimately decide to place him on the injured list, um, which would be a big blow to this Cubs bullpen. That's been just so good as of late, especially because of Lopez. But a groin injury is not something that you want to mess with. Obviously, it could uh, be detrimental to your pitching windup. So we're hoping that this is something that resolves quickly, especially after yesterday's off day, and that Lopez can pitch possibly as early as tonight. But if not, 
uh, and he does have to go on the injury list, the Cubs would be losing arguably one of their best arms out of the back end of the bullpen. He's got a 2.39 ERA this season, but if you look at the stats and compare them uh, to when he started pitching for the Cubs, he's got a .79 ERA with the Cubs in 22 and two-thirds innings. He's been unbelievable at the back end of the bullpen and just starting to get that closer's role, and I hope he's healthy enough to stay in it down the stretch this season. Another guy I want to talk about is the Cubs' first rounder, Cam Smith. Um, we talked about him homering in, I think, six or maybe it was five straight ball games for Myrtle Beach, and uh, he immediately got promoted to high A South Bend. Well, in his first three games in high A South Bend, he's got three hits in all three games. This dude can flat out hit. I think he's going to be a fast riser through the Cubs minor league systems. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if he ends up in double A by the end of the season um, as it is winding down or at least start their next season and continue to climb up these Cubs prospect rankings because this guy can flat out hit. But as it stands right now, the Cubs had an off day yesterday, so they remain two games above 500. They still have the easiest schedule in the National League remaining, um, and they're in second place in the NL Central, nine and a half behind Milwaukee, but just five games back now behind the Braves, who lost yesterday to the Philadelphia Phillies, thanks to a former Cub, Nicholas Castellanos, smacking a two-run homer to take the lead late in that ballgame. The percentages are still low. The Cubs have a 3.9% chance to make the playoffs and just a 0.6% chance to catch Milwaukee. But we talked about this a few weeks ago. The Cubs will not play a team above 500 until September 6th. They're on the stretch of 18 straight against teams below 500. And right now, the Cubs are 9-3 and three on this stretch. So in 12 games, they're 9-3, and three, six games left, three against the Nationals, three against the Pirates. Then you play the Yankees and the Dodgers, and then you go right back to Nationals, Oakland, um, and I think Miami once more, or maybe Pittsburgh once more. But tonight, the Cubs take on the Washington Nationals. The Cubs have not yet announced their starter, but they're going to be going up against Jake Irvin, who is 9-10 and 10 on the year with a 3.80 ERA. So hopefully the Cubs can get to him early and often, and the Cubs can come away with a series opening win in D.C., making that four in a row if they can pull it off. But for now, guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Cubs Baseball Channel. We always appreciate chopping it up and talking Cubs with all of you guys. Keep liking and subscribing, getting in the comment section, following us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And keep being Cubs fans and engaging with us because we love talking about our favorite team. But for now, hopefully we'll talk to you guys tomorrow after a Cubs win. Go Cubs.